listening to the Fun with Horror podcast with your hosts, Scotty and Andrew. Hi. Hi, bud. <laughs> I don't know what to say. I don't either. I'm speechless. Yep. I got nothing. Before we jump into things, you yes. just had me watch a wonderful trailer. Yes. And I'm excited for it, so. That would be the, the yeah. new Resident <laughs> Evil movie. What's it, what's it called? I don't the full actually thing. know. Resident oh. Evil. Something, something. Resident Evil, Welcome to Raccoon City. That's it. That's the one. Yeah, really great. Uh, like I told you, there's just some really cool shout outs to the original first video game. Uh, second, too. I mean, I was I was shocked. Yeah. There's, because there was, obviously, they show the mansion from mm-hmm. the first video game. Right. They show that classic shot of the zombie, the first time you see a zombie in the game. Yep, turning his head. But then you also saw Raccoon uh, Raccoon City, like, uh, RCPD. Oh, right. Yep, you're right. The, the truck driver, like, yep. crashing. That's right from the beginning of the second game. <laughs> so cool. I know it's so awesome. I know. I, I can't was, wait. I am too. I'm. I'm. Yeah. I can't either. It's gonna be great. What? What? What are we doing, buddy? What are we doing for our tenth episode, dude? We are doing our top ten favorite horror movies. Our favorite. Now. Our favorite. I kind of held you back. <laughs> I put. I put the leash on you at the end of our last episode. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. But go for it. Just let loose. What were you gonna say about? Our top ten favorites. I'm gonna go as crazy. opposed to, <laughs> as opposed to the top ten, like the best horror movies. Right. Well, and that's that's the thing is this is our favorite movies, and so, um, you know, no judgments <laughs> or anything. This is like our our top ten. So if, yeah. yeah, like you said, it's not they may not be the best, you know, or the most well known uh, horror movies of all time, but these are our. Like I think you said once, it's it's our desert island movies. You know, if we could take yeah. these to the desert island, these are the ones we would pick. Um, exactly what I was gonna say. Look at that! I remembered. <laughs> Andrew, Andrew, yeah. yes. I also I want to apologize for for holding you back last week. <laughs> Why? <laughs> Don't apologize. <laughs> I apologize for St- putting you on a leash. <laughs> That's okay. You know what? Sometimes I need it. <laughs> baby baby never goes on a leash. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> no one puts baby in the corner. No, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Horror movies. Horror movies. Oh, the, yeah, we should do it. We'll do our top ten favorite uh, romantic dance movies next. Oh, Wait, can we do that today instead? <laughs> yeah, let's, you know what? Forget horror. <laughs> <laughs> Our top ten favorite romantic dance movies. <laughs> Wait, can you think of more than Dirty Dancing? <laughs> um, the only other one would be like Footloose, because there's some romance. Yeah, there that's kind of romance. Dance and yeah, that's true. That's true. So that would be uh, Step Up. Oh, <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what else? <laughs> of course, Step Up. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, I don't know. Wait, was there? Wait, that what's the cheerleading movie? Oh, bring it on! Yeah, bring it on. Is that? Is there? There's got to be romance. Yeah, in there. That, right? Yeah, yeah. There's and some romance. They in there. Yeah, and they, they dance. Yeah, they dance. They cheer. Okay. They dance. Right. Yeah, that works. Uh, a recent one, In the Heights. <laughs> right. They yep. definitely have dancing and romancing in that. Well, if we're gonna do that, <laughs> we'll do La La Land. Wait. So would you call it <laughs> road dancing? <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. I apologize for that. I don't. I just everybody just shut off this podcast. <laughs> yeah, they're they're like, like, no, get with the horror. No, no Scotty, <laughs> bad pun. <laughs> anyway, so back to uh, <laughs> back to horror. Not that not that those movies aren't horror. To yeah. some, they are very horrific. That's true. To each their own. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so these are our ten favorites and. From what you were saying, uh, I'll be honest, this was difficult. Yeah. And I think, yeah, I think you can agree with me. Like, I, two years ago, I 
actually created my top 21. Beautiful. It was a top 21 list that I posted on Facebook for fun. And I, you know, I had to do 21 because there was a movie that I just couldn't not include. Aww. Um, and preparing for this episode, I actually had to kind of look back at that list and mm-hmm. be really, really honest with myself and look at these movies and say, look, if, if I had to take this movie or this movie to a desert island, which one would I take? Right. And there's... I'm going to mention them in a second, but there's a couple of like classic movies that I consider some of the top horror movies ever made. Mm-hmm. But I might not take them to a desert island over some others. Fair. Nope. Totally get it. So though that's that's it's it's surprising. It's surprising to me. Um, I agree. It was really. I did kind of what you said, which which I liked, you know, when you said, which one of these two would I like better? Or, you know, yeah. and then kind of yeah. moved it up that way. But, man. I did the same thing last night. Did you? <laughs> yeah, I mean, I was editing up to last night. And, uh, you know, I was doing it before, but last night I seriously, I went, I, I looked at number one and two, and I was like, okay. Okay, great. Would I take number one over number two? Yes. Right. Two and three. Would I take number two over number three? And you know what? Uh, I'm going to tell you the truth. Yeah. My number two mm-hmm. moved down to number five. Whoa. Okay. Kind of crazy. Yeah. Wow. Well, and so, I actually I added one today. You, what? I, well, into your top ten. Into my top ten. That's amazing. Well, it was, and I it, it's my number ten. And I will okay. explain why. Awesome. But yeah, it's uh, yeah, yep. <laughs> I don't um, want to say anything about it. <laughs> well, the last thing I think we should say before we jump in. Yeah. Uh, we are going to be very careful not to spoil any of these movies. So right, we realize a lot of these movies are going to be very popular, probably. Mm-hmm. Maybe unless you just decided to pick ten obscure as heck movies. Yeah, that's um, all I did. <laughs> you're like too popular no yeah <laughs> but no uh we are we this is not our regular podcast we are not spotlighting any of these movies so we're not going to spoil them we're right. going to do our best not to um obviously yeah we're just we're just gonna we're just gonna be we're gonna be good yes um so we're not going to spoil them nope i agree and yeah We'll talk about them for sure, obviously. But uh, yeah, yeah, we're going to talk about each one. Yeah. Um, also, Andrew and I do not know each other's lists. True. This is like this is a surprise to both of us. Yes, I know. I'm. I'm actually. I'm. Yeah. I'm. I'm more excited to hear yours than I am to talk. No, about No, I'm more excited <laughs> to hear yours, buddy. Stop. Stop it. it. You stop. It. <laughs> what? <laughs> what? <laughs> Jinx. And that's why we're best friends. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> I love you, dude. <laughs> I love you. You like scary movies? Uh huh. What's your favorite scary movie? Uh, I don't know. You have to have a favorite. What comes to mind? Uh, so also, yes. Um, I think it. I think it's this episode. I mean, okay. So basically. I don't even know why I'm saying this because people can see how long the episode is right now anyway. True. But yeah, we're not we're not timing this one. Normally right. normally we time our episodes to be a certain length. Today we're just going to we're just going to talk about our top 10. Yep. This is a new this is uncharted territory for us, so we don't know. <laughs> There's no happen. map. There's no map. <laughs> this is anarchy today. Just anarchy. Well, real quick before we jump into the actual top 10, mm mm-hmm. Mhm. And just to put people in even more suspense, <gasps> um, uh, is there any movies that you just had to leave out? Ooh. Let's let's talk about that first. Go ahead. Um, like honorable mentions or something. Yeah. Do you? Well, yeah. There's a few. Um, I mean, I could do like a lot, but do we want to do probably narrow yeah, it just, down to like just a couple or? Well, okay. Maybe I'll start. Yeah. And then yeah. you'll see because I. I wasn't going to do honorable mentions, mm-hmm. but then I realized that there were just, there was a few movies that I had to mention. Yeah. Um, one of the most weird things is that 
a couple of weeks ago, we had a conversation about Jaws. Oh, yes. Yeah. And we we asked if it's a horror movie or not. Right. The strangest thing happened when I was making this list. I started thinking about Jaws. Yeah. And even though we did say that, yes, it's technically a horror movie, I did not want to include it in this list. Oh, okay. And I would put Jaws ahead of a lot of the movies in this list because it's a classic. Right. But at the same time, I, I, I don't know. I just I felt like it belonged in a different list than this one. No, I totally get that. I, Yep, I agree. Um, and there's two other movies I would like to mention because, and the reason I mention these, uh, you know, I mentioned that two years ago I made a top 20, Mm -hmm. uh, man, just going through that top 20, it was so hard to know that I was leaving out like some of the movies that are from 11 to 20. Right. Um, you know, movies like our favorite martyrs. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> uh, honestly, that's in my top 20. I oh, love that man. movie. Um, Cujo is another great mm. one. But most notably, something I mentioned during uh, just a couple minutes ago. There's a couple movies. Yeah, I have to mention them. Yeah, please. Number one is The Blair Witch Project. Ooh, good. Okay. It was in my top 10. Ooh. But... Since I made that top 10 list two years ago, I have rewatched Blair Witch. I think I rewatched it last year. And, okay, the Blair Witch Project has a very special place in my heart. When it came out, it scared the heck out of me. Mm-hmm. Like, it was, it was terrifying to me because it just, my imagination ran wild. Nice. But it hasn't aged very well, in my opinion. Fair enough. Mm-hmm. So last year when I watched it, I realized uh, maybe there's other movies I'd I'd put in my top ten ahead of this one. Um, and then there's another one that's going to surprise a lot of people. Ooh, okay. The Exorcist. Oh, okay. Got moved out of my top ten. Wow. And this is what I was talking about when I said some movies that are classics mm-hmm. that I do consider some of the best movies uh, in the horror genre ever made. May not be my favorites. I there are ten movies that I would take to a desert island instead of The Exorcist or ahead of The mm-hmm. Exorcist, and that was that was a really difficult decision for me because I feel like The Exorcist should be on a top ten list, but it's not on mine. Fair enough. So those are the movies I wanted to mention. What about you? Ooh, those are good. Um... Yeah, they're really Thank good. You. Yeah. Well, there was so there's one that that holds a special place in my heart, but again, just like kind of what you had with Jaws, um, I would almost consider it a thriller. And yeah. it's funny because we were just talking about this director recently, um, and that would be uh, the 2001 movie Joyride. <laughs> oh, interesting. Yeah, I love that movie dearly. Um, but I almost, I just went, man, that's one of those ones where I may, might consider it a thriller. So I'm just, I'm not going to put it on the list. Um, so that I one's kind of. I've never seen it. You've never seen Joyride? I've never seen it. Okay. I'm not. That's, on my list now. That's all Maybe not my say. horror list, but it's on my list. Okay. Good. I mean, it, 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 it's considered a horror, I guess, but I don't know. Watching it. Okay. Yeah. Um, Okay, I'm not going to say much about that then. Anyway, uh, yeah, <laughs> another one that I, I cherish, and it's a, it's a campy, fun, goofy, silly, wonderful movie. Cherish. I cherish this movie, but... Cherish it. It didn't quite make the top ten. Um, okay. In fact, it got, bar- it got pushed out. Would be uh, Return of the Living Dead. Ooh, that's a good one. I love that movie. Brain. It's funny. It's funny you mentioned that one because I've, I've been, you know, there's, I want to watch all the horror movies, but right. you know, there's a couple in my head lately that I've been kind of yearning to to see mm-hmm. again. That's one of them. I've Ooh. been planning to rewatch that soon. Oh, it's a great one. Oh. and then my my last one I'll I'll talk about would be, uh, and I think it's not in my top ten because it is a fun movie. 
Mm-hmm. It's a great movie, but it's one of those ones. I think I've seen it more than eh, at least a few times. But the first time I saw it, just had such an impact. And every time after, it's still fun to watch, but it's not the same. Would be Saw, the very first Saw. Oh yeah. Just yeah. because that, you know, I mean, you know why. Um, mm-hmm. But it just had such an impact the first time I saw it. My brother watched it, and he was like, Andrew, come watch this. You need to see this right now. <laughs> I was like, okay. Yeah. yeah. And watched it, and it was just, yeah. Yep. Great movie, great, but. Great movie. Yeah, great movie. Just didn't, didn't, it was close, but did not make my top <laughs> ten. Nice. Yeah. Nice. So those are some honorable mentions. <laughs> okay. Well, now then, let's jump into our top ten, top ten, <laughs> Andrew and Scotty's top ten horror movies. Ha cha cha. Just made that up. That um, was nice, man. <laughs> Whoa, you, that should be our theme this week. Forget the uh, <laughs> the piano or the bells. We're doing that. <laughs> well, yeah. <laughs> I was like, wait, what? <laughs> oh yeah, the piano and bells. <laughs> yeah. Um. So. We made a decision that uh, we didn't know who who was going to start off our top ten. So I'm going to roll a die. Yep. <laughs> I've got a ten sided dice here to see who starts off. Sweet. Uh, Andrew, pick odd or even. Um, I'll I'll go even. It's odd. I'm going first. All right, let's hear but it. That means man. you're bringing it home. You're finishing us. Oh geez. Okay. All right. <laughs> <laughs> so number ten. My number 10 horror movie <laughs> suspense <laughs> is uh, The Conjuring. Ooh, fantastic. Um, and it, it's it's interesting. Uh, you and I were both kind of rewatching scenes from these movies earlier because mm-hmm. uh, we mentioned this. Um, and, man, you know, we watched, we did The Conjuring uh, 3, the, the Devil Made Me Do It. Right. We did that earlier in our podcast episodes Mm -hmm. and you know i i've been thinking about that one so much i forgot how freaking scary the conjuring (laughs) is and i was watching some scenes from it last night and i was like "Woo, yeah man this movie is good um it almost pushed up into my number nine spot but no um i just i i think it's it's an incredibly good movie it's when I saw it in theaters, mm-hmm. I was shocked at how how scary it was. It, it didn't stick with me afterwards. Okay? okay, right. But it just it had it all. Like it starts with just such a great haunting. Yeah. And um. And it just it just goes on and it it, it accelerates as the movie goes on. It's perfectly paced. Uh, all the acting is great. We're introduced to uh, Patrick Wilson's and Vera Farmiga's The Warrens. Mm-hmm. And it's, honestly, it's the reason that people are kind of upset at Malignant, because James Wan set such a high bar with The Conjuring. Right. Uh, that people are, were expecting the same thing with Malignant. In fact, I just saw... Not to talk about malignant too much, but mm-hmm. I just saw a post by somebody that that was talking about um, how how he was expecting The Conjuring, oh. even though James Wan specifically said, "Do not expect The Conjuring." Yep. But yeah, people are still expecting that, and that's why a lot of people are turned off of Malignant. I love The Conjuring. Yeah, so good. It's if I if this was a a a listing of the top 10 scariest movies mm, mm-hmm. in my personal list, this would go higher. Oh, yep. I would agree. But as it is, it's uh it's number 10 on my list. The conjuring. Beautiful. Beautiful. That we, <laughs> maybe we will do a top 10 scariest someday. <laughs> maybe, maybe who knows what's going to happen. That's a great, that's a man. What a good way to start this. Thank you. Yeah. No, thank you. Look, there's no one. There's no one here. See? Ugh! It's that smell again. Oh my god. It's standing right behind you. What's your number 10? My number 10. Now this one, I might get some guff for. Um, 
But as I mentioned, Return of the Living Dead was right there next to it. Okay. I wanted a zombie movie. I love zombies. Okay. I really wanted one in my top ten. Um, but I really wanted a funny one. So, <laughs> I did nine number ten. It's 2004, Shaun of the Dead. Ooh, which is, nice. is still considered horror. Yeah, yeah, I, um, I agree. But it's, I honestly, it's it's a movie I could watch once a week for the rest of my life and still be entertained and still find nice. something in the background that I had never noticed before. Edgar Wright is arguably, man, he's up there. He could be my favorite director. Um, I think he's fantastic. I think the story's fun. I think the acting's great. I love all the the way he films that movie where there's just so many quick quick shots um, and some great deaths. There's some really, it's a zombie movie, so I'm not going to spoil, or I, I'm not going to spoil anything, but uh, there's deaths. Let's be honest, it's zombies. <laughs> um, <laughs> but there's some really great deaths in it and just a, um, and really some just uh, iconic moments, iconic lines. And again, it's it's one that, I just, I laugh, and there's still spooky moments, and it's always fun. It just is yeah. always fun for me, anytime I watch it. I think that's a great movie, and I love that I love that you included a movie in your top ten that can also be considered a comedy. Right, um, <laughs> yeah. You know, not, not to go off the rails, but I've, I've mentioned what we do in the shadows, mm. and that is absolutely a comedy, but it's another one that could... It, that is easily classified as a horror movie as well. Nice. Okay. So, yeah, that one's that's fantastic. Shaun of the Dead, number yeah. nine. So that's my no, that's or my number, number ten. ten. <laughs> that's my that's my I'm just, ten. I'm going crazy. <laughs> so yeah, yep, my ten. Shaun I of just the made dead. it your number nine. <laughs> yep. So okay, what's your I'll, number ten? <laughs> let me tell you. <laughs> uh. <laughs> you got somewhere you're going? Uh, yeah, we're going to the Winchester. The pub. Yeah. All right, so All right. Uh, You're number, number nine. nine. Yeah. Okay, so my number nine um, is not the newer one, but <gasps> the Ooh. 1989 Pet Cemetery. <gasps> nice. Love it. Oh. Love Pet Cemetery. I saw this in theaters when I was a teenager. Um, and to this day, you know, some of the effects – especially later in the movie, mm -hmm. maybe don't hold up so well. But the mood of the movie holds up. The story of the movie, the horrifying story, absolutely holds up. Nice. And as I was watching a couple scenes last night, I was just reflecting on how amazing Fred Gwynn is in that movie <laughs> as Judd Crandall. <laughs> yep. Well, that's our damn road. <laughs> Don't you know, he's. <laughs> <laughs> I know what you're thinking, Lois. <laughs> so good. <laughs> Dad is better. Dad is better. <laughs> and, you know, John Lithgow, who yeah. played Judd in the remake, I, I love John Lithgow. But he decided not to go with the, uh, the New England main uh, accent. Mm. And. I love that Fred Gwynn just went for it. <laughs> and, you know, I could go on about Fred Gwynn the whole time, but the movie is just, it's just so good. Mm -hmm. And another one of my favorite facets of that movie is the score by Elliot Goldenthal. Oh. Man, I remember sitting in my room listening to the soundtrack. And back then, like today, it seems kind of, standard that movie soundtracks the the tracks on the soundtrack are in the order that they appear in the movie mm -hmm. but back when i was a teenager and stuff they would reorder the tracks on a soundtrack more for um i guess flow huh. like the way the tracks flowed so i would go through i would watch that movie Mm -hmm. listen to the music, find that track on the soundtrack, and then put the tracks in order. Oh, my god! And make a mixtape of all the tracks in order. It was nerdy and fantastic, and I loved every minute of it. Oh, that is my favorite story ever. That's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> I love Pet Cemetery, the original. Let me ask you, too, since we're on that 
movie. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. How did you? I I don't really think I actually don't think I read the book. How did it fare with the book? Was it similar? Different. Um, it followed it pretty well. Okay. It did a good like hour and forty minute condensed version of the book. Right. Um, I'm not going to get into it, but mm-hmm. my only, my only, when I saw the movie, my only critique mm-hmm. was I didn't like the very, very end, the last, the last scene. Yep, I know what you're and talking about. And I won't, yeah, I won't go into it, but mm-hmm. the book, the movie just took the book's ending and took it a step further, which I didn't think was needed mm-hmm. because the, the book's ending is so perfect and creepy. So that's all I'm going to say. Okay. But I I recently reread the book. I think I read it last year even. Oh, nice. Wow. Or the year before. And yeah, it the movie does a really good job of adapting that book. Beautiful. Which, coincidentally, one of my top books of all time as Ooh. well. Ooh. Ooh. I want to so hear what that is list at some point. Uh, um. Maybe. <laughs> Sometimes dad is better. The Indians knew that. They stopped using that burial ground, and the ground went sour. Don't think about doing it, Lewis. The place gets holier. The place is evil. Sometimes, that is better. What's your number nine? My number nine is a relatively newer movie, um, directed by John Krasinski. Yeah. And that is A Quiet Place from 2018. Yes. I thought... I it, So one thing going through my top ten, they are my top ten, but I thought it'd be fun to have like a, you know, a zombie and like a creature and a few other things. Um, this would be like my creature feature. I think... I just think this movie's fantastic from start to finish. That's That's awesome. By yeah. the way, oh, uh, because you, you really you really thought hard about the desert island thing and like yeah. having different types of movies. Well, that was what I wanted. I I was like, you know, if I do ten creature features, I'm gonna get it's boring. You know, I'd get bored there. So I, yeah, that was just one of the <laughs> things. I, th- I well, I'd probably be bored anyway. But you know, um, <laughs> yeah. So I tried to mix it up a little bit and have a few things in there. There's a few that you'll be like, okay, that's the same genre. But um, anyway, yeah, a yeah. quiet place was. One of the most fun times I've had in the theater. Yeah. And that being said, like we went, my wife and I uh, went to see this and there was like, you know, teenagers and stuff. I sound like an old man. There was a bunch <laughs> of these youths in the theater. <laughs> um, and those damn kids. Those damn kids. <laughs> uh, no, but I, you know, I really thought I was like, oh man, this is, they're going to be loud. It's, this is yeah. like a quiet, it's a quiet place. It's a quiet movie. The second that movie started, with the intro it had, that entire theater, including my wife and I, were dead silent for two hours. We everyone sat there in silence, and it was the most, one of the most memorable times I've ever had in a theater. Just because we were all in this movie together, like we, the second one of us moved, we all looked because we thought, man, it's it was, yeah, such an ex- experience. It was amazing. Completely agree. I remember uh, yeah. uh, I saw the movie in a theater as well with my girlfriend. Nice. And I remember just her eating popcorn. <laughs> we like she 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 grabbed some popcorn out of her bucket to eat it, and it made noise. And she and I both like kind of side eyed each other. We're like, <gasps> okay. Don't do that. I have to tell you, my wife and I did the <laughs> exact same thing. That is amazing. <laughs> my wife at one point grabbed the popcorn, and I she like she takes it, like, <laughs> and I just. I, I like slowly wow. turned to her and looked at her and she slowly looked at me and was like, is that too loud? And I was did like, you just, yeah. Did you just out what your wife sounds like while eating popcorn? <laughs> no, it was just, I mean, no, she's going she's gonna to hate me. No, it was because it was so quiet. You could hear anything. I mean, anything you got. Yeah. Um, yeah. So the second no, she know, just bit it, you know what I mean? It was like, <gasps> shh. <laughs> That's awesome. That is awesome. That's hilarious. Um, another yeah. another interesting thing about that movie yeah. is that um, when it came out on home video, mm-hmm. uh, I bought it immediately, but it took me a very very long time to rewatch it because as you're t- as you're saying, 
that movie was such a great experience. Right. It was more than just a movie in the theater. It was an experience. Yeah. And I was, I think in the back of my mind, I didn't watch it right away because I wasn't sure if that spe- experience uh, would be replicated at home. Mm, fair enough. And yep. I didn't I didn't watch it until, I think, this year. Oh, wow. I finally rewatched it to prepare for the sequel. And I was very pleased that it was maybe not exactly the same experience, but just as good. Good. Like, that's a masterfully made movie. It really is. Props to John Krasinski. Well done. Fantastic. Okay, so that's my number nine. So now it's your number eight. My number eight. My number eight is a classic. Ooh, okay. It's a classic horror movie. It's a movie that many people would put at number one or number two. Whoa, okay. And that movie is Stanley Kubrick's The Shining. Nice. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah, very good. Um, It's no secret that I love Stephen King. I love Stephen King adaptations, even some of the bad ones. Mm -hmm. But The Shining, as everybody knows, is just a classic horror movie. It wasn't a great adaptation of Stephen King's book. (laughs) Stanley Kubrick kind of did his own thing. It's There's really no no need to even talk about that too much because so many people know the story already. Stephen Mm -hmm. King did not like Stanley Kubrick's vision. Stanley Kubrick did not like Stephen King's script. Huh. So Stanley Kubrick did his own thing and made a tremendous movie. Um, As a horror movie... On its own, it's it's amazing. Uh, in my opinion, it may be Jack Nicholson's best role ever. Nice. Uh, and he's had a lot of good ones. Yeah. Oh yeah. Um, <laughs> and just every every scene of that movie is a work of art. Mm. Um, every every shot is perfect, in my opinion. Beautiful. And it to the to this day. It can be disturbing. Um, yeah. There are moments in that movie that are just really, really uncomfortable. The the music that Kubrick chose, Wendy Carlos's uh, score, um, but also the other music that Stanley Kubrick put into the movie, it does such an amazing job of setting the mood. Uh, yeah, there's not much more that needs to be said. The Shining is, so many people have seen it, and it's it's my number eight. Beautiful. Well said, man. Well done. So you have, that's awesome, a couple um, Stephen Kings in there as well, even though, like you said, very different than the book, but yeah, yeah, I love yeah. it. I think that's great. Say, Lloyd, it seems I'm temporarily light. <laughs> How's my credit in this joint anyway? Your credit's fine, Mr. Torrance. That's swell. I like you, Lloyd. I always liked you. Uh, Andrew? Yes. What is your number eight? My number eight is maybe my most obscure movie on this list. Uh, <laughs> this, so I very first saw this movie when I was living in L.A., and I loved it so much that I started writing a script for a remake when I was there. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> it is. That's awesome. <laughs> yeah, I, I gave up on it, I think, a long time ago. <laughs> But um, I re- think, <laughs> yeah, I think I don't, it's probably somewhere, somewhere deep down in my computer. But um, uh, I recently rewatched it and had just as much fun this time. And that is 1987's Dolls. <laughs> oh, wow. I love that movie. It is campy. It's silly. It's it has some. Some really awkward dialogue as well. Um, <laughs> but man, it's just it's it's just fun. Like I love the the um claymation in it is a blast. Uh it's still the dolls are creepy looking. Um there's some really horrifying scenes. There's one I won't say what um happens, but there's a scene in the attic that is still creepy to this day. Yeah. 
Yeah. Um, and Guy Rolf, the actor Guy Rolf, uh, who plays the character Gabriel Hartwick, um, is one of my favorite horror characters of all time. So, uh, nice. yeah, yeah, very obscure movie, very strange movie, but a lot of fun. Uh, and yeah, so my number eight is Dolls. But you know, as obscure as it is, mm -hmm. it's been popping up in my news feeds on Facebook and Twitter. Uh, I don't know if there's an anniversary right oh. around now of when it released, but I've been seeing quite a few posts about Dolls. Weird, okay. And I've been... I've been wanting to rewatch it because uh, I think Dolls came out. Well, you said 1987. Mm -hmm. um, back back before I actually moved to LA when I was in high school, I would come out here and visit during the summers and stay with my uncle. Mm -hmm. And I remember there was this video store, this VHS video store, that we would drive quite a ways <laughs> to go rent movies from because. There was nowhere closer to his place. Nice. And I know that Dolls is one of the movies I rented, and I don't remember it that well at all. Oh, wow. Okay. So I think I definitely need to rewatch that one. Oh, please do. It's, yeah, it's just fun. It's a fun movie, man. Dolls. Dolls. That's awesome. Yeah. Great entry. Right. <laughs> Thanks, man. All right, let's jump into it. What's what is your number seven? Scotty? I'm just gonna say I'm looking at my list, and none of my entries are as obscure as that. Right, I said, man. I don't think dolls. Was... Honestly, I don't think dolls is that obscure. Oh, really? Yeah, I mean, I think among horror fans, it's it's a well known movie, whether people have seen it or not. That's just that's just my view. No, that's fair. Yeah. Um, but it's definitely more obscure than most of the movies that we're talking about. Right. Yeah. So for sure. Yeah, I love that entry. Oh, thanks, um, buddy. That's sweet. Nobody wants a doll that's special anymore. My number seven. Yes. I've mentioned before. And okay. I, I've even mentioned the story behind it, mm -hmm. but I'll, I'm going to mention it again. But my number seven is Poltergeist. Oh, nice. Perfect. Uh, it's the movie that I consider my gateway into every other horror movie that I've seen. Nice. Um, it was the movie that uh, my dad said I could watch as long as I did not end up in bed with he and my mom that <laughs> night. And I watched it, and I proudly slept in my bed by myself. <laughs> um, uh, I, I've watched this movie so many times. The most notable, maybe, in a cemetery. Uh, watching it at Hollywood Forever Cemetery. Uh, was awesome. Nice. Oh. I love Poltergeist. Everything about it, it is it is a Steven Spielberg horror movie that was not actually directed by Steven Spielberg. It was directed <laughs> by Toby Hooper, mm -hmm. who also directed Texas Chainsaw Massacre, of course. Mm -hmm. And there are many, many theories that Toby is was just kind of just kind of there that Spielberg was on set quite a bit and actually shaped a lot of that movie. <laughs> and while I love Toby Hooper, and I would never take anything away from Toby, mm -hmm. and I do believe that he had a lot to do with that movie, it is really difficult to not watch that movie and, and not see Spielberg's influence <laughs> on it. <laughs> yep. it's got, yeah, it's got a lot of Spielbergian touches. Um, but yeah, everything about that movie is so good. Uh, I'll I'll never look at trees the same way again. <laughs> uh, it's the first movie that made me realize that some people were scared of clowns. Oh, right on. I'm not. I love clowns. <sighs> me too. Especially creepy ones. Yes. <laughs> um, again, as as I'm going to mention with a bunch of these movies, the music. Mm. Uh, the score was done by Jerry Goldsmith, and it's one of my favorite horror movie scores ever. Nice. Uh, he's he's got the children's choir in there. Mm -hmm. It's just such a great score. Everything about that movie, I love. Um, like, uh, I love this. I love this list, man. <laughs> it's such a fun list, dude. Because <laughs> as we're going through this list, like you mentioned, Shaun of the Dead, mm -hmm. uh, and you could watch it every every once a week. I would love to just sit and watch all 10 of these movies in a row. Right? Yeah. Like every time, yeah. 
as I'm going through these movies, I'm 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 just sitting here going, I want to rewatch this movie now. Me too. Me too. Dang it. For sure. I know. I know. Anyway, oh. so my number seven is Poltergeist. Not the remake. Not the remake. I actually <laughs> never saw the remake. Yeah, that's good. Okay. I do love Sam Rockwell, though. I love Sam Rockwell. I did not love the remake. Fair enough. Yep. And that's all I'm really going to say, because maybe someday you'll pick it as your movie. <laughs> hey. <laughs> yeah, okay. Well, we'll see. Yeah, we'll see. <laughs> it would be interesting to talk about. Yeah. Maybe we and will. We've got, we've got years of yeah, episodes right. ahead of us, so who knows? Yeah, we're, we're only on episode 10. Yeah, we got, yeah. We got plenty to watch. They're here. Perfect. It's time for your number seven, buddy. My number seven, I believe, is my newest movie on here. Ooh. Um, oh. Which is, this one's going to be those one, one of the ones where people are like, what? Of all the classics? This, this movie... Was awesome. Um, mm. It's part of a trilogy, but I'm only going to pick the first one. Okay. Um, however, they all three should be watched together. That being said, my number seven is Fear Street Part One. <gasps> Ooh, they absolutely should all three be watched yes, together. Absolutely. I would put them all three together, but I can't do that in my top ten. So. Eh. I, you know, well, it's so, our top ten. It's my top ten. Well, yeah, but I want to add other stuff, so... No, well, but I mean, you could, you, I, I, you know, I'm going to tell you right now that I think you could say that Fear Street Part 1 is the official entry mm -hmm. for number 7, but you would put the whole trilogy as number 7. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. I like it. Thanks. This was just, it was, so when I first saw kind of like the trailer for it, Netflix was going to have these Fear Street movies, and they were coming out every week, just for three weeks straight. Um I thought, that's a cool idea. I love that. You know, we don't have to wait long. It's kind of a fun month, essentially, almost, that you get to just, like, have a new horror movie come out, and you can watch it right away. Um, and so the first day when it came out, the first one, I got up early. I I, I think I got <laughs> up early. I think it was just because I was excited about it. It was like Yeah, you did. I it was remember. like 4.30 in the morning, and I, <laughs> I was like, well... Time to watch because I like I like I mentioned last week I have Fridays off and so it came out on Fridays mm -hmm. or they all came out on Fridays and so I went downstairs and I watched it the first one I went whoa that was way better than I even thought it could be it was such a an homage to horror movies and there was yeah. just wonderful moments great cast great writing and so for all three of them every week that you know for the next two weeks I got up at like four in the morning four thirty in the morning ran downstairs to watch it felt like Christmas. It really did. Like I was like I was so excited to go and watch this new this new movie. So um yeah, yeah, it just it gave me some really good feelings and nostalgia and I had a blast watching them. And so yeah, for that and the story, I mean the story's great, but for that it it's number seven on my list. Wonderful movies. Um and a piece of uh, fun with horror trivia. Ooh, yes. If you remember my friend. Even though before we started the podcast and we started our movie game, mm -hmm. even though Scare Me was our first movie, we also, I right. was about to watch um, the, I think, half of part two and then part three of Fear Street. Mm -hmm. And we also decided we would talk about that a little bit. Yeah. Our, our next phone conversation. So uh, Fear Street was actually part of the beginnings of what is now fun <laughs> with horror. It was the prequel to fun with horror. <laughs> I love it. Aw. I love it. That's a that's a great entry. Thanks, man. Thank you. I mean, I'm going to probably say that every entry that you say. I know. Yeah. I, I know. <laughs> I love that you put it on there. That's Thanks, great. man. Thank you. I also loved all three movies, and I thought there was such great homage to older horror movies. Uh, right. But while also being their own thing. Yep. Exactly. Yep. So, yeah. Beautiful. Are you sure everything's okay? No, I just have to run out really quickly and kill that pervert. Awesome. All right, man. Let's jump into number what is... Six? Yeah, you're number six. What is it? Number six. So this is interesting because... And this is another conversation we're going to have a couple weeks from now. Oh, okay. This... And people are going to laugh at me. I know this because they already have. 
Oh. But this is the scariest movie I've seen. Whoa, okay. In my life. And it's not my number one. So the scariest movies are not necessarily my absolute favorites. Right. But this is Paranormal Activity. Nice. Oh, I love that you picked that. That's awesome. Holy crap. <laughs> I, yeah, this movie, so my imagination scares me more than any special effects could. Mm. And I guess the thing that scares me most is unseen things. Ooh, yep. It's so weird. I desperately want ghosts to be real, but at the same time, they scare the heck out of me. <laughs> <laughs> I saw Paranormal Activity with a friend in a theater the night it opened, and I, uh, yeah, <laughs> I was driving home afterwards, and I had to call her on the way home. <laughs> I was awesome. just like, I called her, and I said, I am so freaked out. Would you... Could you just stay on the phone with me for a second? Yes. And I remember coming into my apartment, and all the lights were out. I had to quickly turn on the light as soon as I walked in, and then I, like, seriously ran into my bedroom to turn on the light real quick. <laughs> I was that freaked out. That movie freaked me out so much. <laughs> and it freaked me out for the next week or two to come. Man. There are moments in that movie that at that time especially were so terrifying to me mm -hmm. that I would, again, I mean, it's okay It's okay to talk about some things, but without spoilers, you know, they, they wake up in the middle of the night and they hear things. Mm -hmm. And some of the noises that they hear haunted me in real life. I would be laying in bed <laughs> trying to go to sleep, and then I would think about that scene <laughs> and... It, I would just, I wouldn't be able to sleep for a little bit. And I'll, I'll tell you right now, my one saving grace was that at that time, I had a beautiful dog, and Aww. I knew that if anything was happening in my apartment, that dog would bark. Mm -hmm. So I would have to consciously remind myself that, uh, hey, my dog, she's, she's not barking, so everything's okay. <laughs> That's awesome. But I love Paranormal Activity. Uh, I love the sequels as well, even though... I, I love the sequels for different reasons. Mm -hmm. uh, I think three is also very scary. I think two is slight. It's 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 scary too, not quite as scary as one and three. Mm -hmm. After that, it kind of gets away from being scary. But I really enjoy the added lore that they started to put into the movies. Nice, yeah. And the, you know they're coming out with a new paranormal activity mm -hmm. this month that I'm pretty interested in. Oh, I didn't know it was this month. Oh, geez. Yeah, I, th I believe it's on Paramount Plus this month. Oh, ah, cool. Which and, one? Oh, go ahead. Yeah, go ahead. No, no. Uh, which one? Because we, we went we went and saw one in the theater, but I can't remember which one it was. I think it was three. Was it three? Okay. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it was so three. I was thinking, but I wasn't. The one that took place in the past, in the 80s. Yes, okay. Um, And yeah, and the only other thing I'm going to... I'm going to add, which was very cool, is the night or the day after I saw Paranormal Activity, I went to Best Buy, mm -hmm. and there's Katie <gasps> from the movie walking through Best Buy. And I, I was so blown away by the movie that I had to go up and say hi. And nice. she was so nice to me. Um, and, yeah, she, I, was, I just said, you know, I saw it last night. It's one of the scariest movies I've ever seen. <laughs> and she was just – she was so – the movie hadn't truly blown up yet, mm -hmm. so she was so thrilled to just hear people loving the movie. Oh, that's awesome. So, that yeah, that's so... my number six, Paranormal Activity. And, again, I would love to rewatch it soon. Although that one, I have to be careful when I rewatch it because it freaks me out all over again. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, I love that you picked that one. That is a, that's perfect. That's so good. <laughs> that is so good. Dealing with demons is not my area. I'm very uncomfortable with it. And I'll tell you quite frankly, I sense that there's something going on in this house. You cannot run from this. It will follow you. It may lay dormant for years. Something may trigger it to get, become more active. And it will, over time, reach out to communicate with you. What is your number six? So my number six, now we're, we're, uh, we're jumping into the, the slasher genre. Ooh. Ooh. Um, so I love 
the Nightmare on Elm Street movies as as I know you do. Oh, I love them. However, of them all, my favorite is oh. number six, and that's Nightmare on Elm Street what? three: The Dream Warriors. Oh, okay. <laughs> I thought you were saying Nightmare on Elm Street six was your favorite. No, oh. no, number six. No, <laughs> sorry. No, 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 <laughs> no. Dream Warriors. Dream Warriors was is is and I believe will always remain my favorite nightmare. It had some of the best kills. Yep. It had a great story. It had <laughs> it just it had so much there was some great campiness too. Oh my gosh. From one character in particular. Um Oh, which character? Uh <laughs> the wizard. Um Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, <laughs> so good. But uh, yeah, and there's, I won't say what, but one of my top 10 favorite death scenes takes place in this movie. Um, well, I'll say what, I won't, I'll, I won't spoil yeah, be it. be vague, be vague. Um, it involves a sleepwalker. Yes, I know the exact scene you're talking about. Yep. Jeez. That is one of the most horrifying scenes, but also one of the best kills I've seen in a movie. Man, um, I want to rewatch this one. Come oh, on, so good and yeah, like uh, who's uh, Patricia Arquette's in it? Lawrence Fishburne's yeah. in it. I mean, it's it's awesome. It's such a fun movie. Yeah, it's it, of. I love the original. Don't get me wrong, but three is three is my my desert island for sure. Awesome, yeah. awesome, dude. So that's my number six, man. Awesome, dude. Awesome, bruh. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know where that came from. I'm sorry. I don't either. Okay, that was my number six. So now we're to the, your number five, which you said earlier, I believe, was your, yeah. used to be your number one. No, it's the, it was my number two. Oh, number two. Sorry, I misheard. So it was number two. I was okay. actually I was actually about to mention that as well. But oh, yes, this movie before last night was my number two. But then I had to be really honest with myself. Hmm. But number five, Andrew. Yeah is a movie that you and I fondly watch together. <laughs> it is the Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Oh, um, that's awesome. <laughs> yeah, this is a movie that, uh, man, I remember kind of being nervous to watch when I was young. Because, mm-hmm. you know, I got into horror movies, but there were certain horror movies that I knew were on a different level than others. And yeah. Texas Chainsaw Massacre, I'd always heard, was on a different level. And it's great because sometimes you watch those movies and, y- you know, you might have you might have built them up a little bit too much. Mm-hmm. But I can honestly say that Texas Chainsaw Massacre disturbed me. <laughs> I, yeah, I wouldn't say... I wouldn't say the movie is... is su- honestly really scary Mm -hmm. more as much as it's disturbing and to this day whenever i watch texas chainsaw massacre i'm always left with this kind of a bleak feeling this you know what it's like yeah oh yeah because that's you know we watched it together and it was the same thing it's just like kind of this uh you feel you feel a little dirty after watching it totally yep and i love that I do love it. (laughs) There's so many iconic moments. Um, uh, Him, after he pulls the guy into the room and he slams that door shut. Uh, When he comes out and grabs uh, grabs the girl on the porch. Uh, Yeah, Uh, it's so many iconic moments. Such a such a offbeat movie. And the thing that I realized, I think we might have mentioned it when you and I uh, saw it as well. Mm Mm-hmm. And and I noticed again when I watched it with uh, with our buddy JD. Mm-hmm. Um, that movie is disturbing for my neighbors as well, <laughs> <laughs> because when you watch that movie, there's a certain point in the second half of the movie where the final girl mm-hmm. um, is screaming, oh, and God. she screams for so long. She's screaming for so many minutes of this movie that I I honestly at, at a certain point I had to turn my my TV down because I'm wondering what my neighbors are thinking. 
hearing this constant screaming. <laughs> and I honestly got nervous, like that my neighbors would wonder what the heck was going on. But yeah, that's it's very unnerving as well. Yeah. And I think it's it's on it's Toby Hooper's best work. It's as much as they've tried to duplicate that feeling in other Texas Chainsaw movies, mm -hmm. nobody, nobody has been able to duplicate that raw, uh, just documentary type feel. Totally. I think it's impossible to duplicate. Uh, yeah. And for that reason, Texas Chainsaw Massacre is my number five. Oh, that's such a good one. Oh my gosh. <laughs> oh. One of the best nights of my life, man, watching that with you. <laughs> <laughs> Texas Chainsaw and Martyrs. And Martyrs. Good gravy. The events of that day were to lead to the discovery of one of the most bizarre crimes in the annals of American history. The Texas Chainsaw Massacre. It's your turn, buddy. <laughs> all right. <laughs> Number all right. five. <laughs> Number five. So uh, I, love, I love slasher movies, so I'm going to do another one. Yeah, do it. Um... This one, as a kid, was one of the most horrifying things to me, this character. Um, oh. And that's Chucky. However, I love the first Child's Play, but my favorite is Child's Play 2, and that yeah. is my number five. Uh, I think that movie's a blast. My, my, my favorite moment is towards the end. And Chucky, I won't spoil it, but Chucky just doesn't look the same as he usually does. <laughs> yeah, I know what you're talking about. Um, and that moment was so creepy and awesome and exciting. Oh, man. And this was one, I, I might have mentioned this on the podcast. I don't really remember. But when I, I rewatched this, I think, I don't know, last year, two years ago. No, it was probably last year. Um, I rewatched it. Uh, Loved it again. And then I told my wife, because it was a Friday, I said, yeah, I watched Child's Play 2. And she's like, without me? And I said, well, you want to watch it? <laughs> and so we watched it again that day. I watched it twice in one day. And both times, I had a goofy grin on my face and was not at all tired of it. It is one of the most fun I've had watching a horror movie. And I always will. It's just a blast. And um, that whole series is a lot of fun. So I'm I'm really looking forward to the, the TV series and... Uh, yeah, what has to, what 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 is out there? What's to come? But yeah, my number five is Child's Play two. Well, as you know, I'm watching the Child's Play movies myself. Mm hmm. And another another like nice little uh, fun with horror trivia is that one year you got me for my birthday. Mm -hmm. You bought me a couple of Funko Pops. Yes, sir. And they were so awesome because <laughs> both of them were part two pops. Yeah. <laughs> right? Yep. Yeah, they were. It was Jason from Friday the 13th part two. Mm -hmm. And then it was Chucky from Child's Play 2. <laughs> and it was great because I didn't really remember Child's Play 2 that much. Oh. And <laughs> it wasn't until just, you know, a month ago or so that I rewatched it finally. And I, I had forgotten how good Child's Play 2 was. <laughs> And so, and then I got to the scene that the Funko Pop is from, and I, I just, I had a blast. So, yes, yeah. Yes, dude. Oh. Child's Play 2. Child's Good Play one. 2. Thanks, man. Do you know what you've done? It's too late. I've spent too much time in this body. All righty. Now we're, we're, we're getting there. We're at number four. Number four. Whew. Well, yep. Yeah. So, Dream Warriors is your favorite nightmare. Yes. Mine will always be A Nightmare on Elm Street. Beautiful. Uh, that's my number four movie, the original A Nightmare on Elm Street. And it's another story that I've mentioned here before, but I I wanted to see that movie so bad when I was 11 years old. <laughs> Fangoria Magazine did a nice article on it, and they showed a lot of the major kills from the movie. Wow. And, man, I the day – you don't know excitement. <laughs> like the day that my mom <laughs> took me to the video store, I was in a play at the time. <laughs> and she took me to a video store, and they had it, and I rented it. I went to rehearsal that night knowing that I had this, this diamond 
in my car <laughs> waiting to be watched. <laughs> I was about to finally see A Nightmare on Elm Street. Ooh. When we got home that night, I went into the living room. I put it on <laughs> partway through the movie. It was so good. I had the lights off, but <laughs> like the kitchen lights were shining into the living room. It was fine. Mm -hmm. Halfway through the movie, my mom comes out and she said, she said, Scott, I, I can't take the noise. I got to close this door. <laughs> oh, so no. she closed the door of the kitchen. Now I'm in pitch darkness. 11 year old Scotty watching A Nightmare on Elm Street. And I, I just absolutely loved the movie. But then the movie ends. Little Scotty goes to bed, goes into his bedroom. And he, he tries to sleep for a second, but then he's, he's honestly scared that Freddy Aww. is going to come get him in his dreams, maybe. But, uh, and I'm going to keep talking about Little Scotty in the third person. But then Please Little Scotty... <laughs> Little Scotty goes back out to the living room, <laughs> takes out his video cassette of Dumbo, <laughs> and puts it on because he was too scared of Freddy. Oh. But even to this day, I think A Nightmare on Elm Street is a fantastic movie. The music is perfect. Uh, as much as I do love Dream Warriors, <laughs> just, I mean, I guess it's experiential or whatever the word is. Right. But it's it's my experience with Nightmare on Elm Street that nothing in that series will ever be able to top. Right. Uh, so, yeah, number four is Nightmare on Elm Street. Oh, I love that story. That's awesome. That's so Thank good. You. I, I knew that had to be coming for you. I was like, I know you love yeah. that movie. You know, you know me too well. You I probably you. are not going to be surprised at my top three. Well, I don't I'm, – I'm trying not to think of them because I want to yeah, be – Yeah, let's not think of them. Yeah, I'm not – My number four, uh, it's not a well-known movie. <laughs> Just kidding. It is. Uh, it's <laughs> 1978's Halloween. Uh, nice. The, very, the, the original, the very first one that started, man, that movie started a lot as well. It helped, helped kind of define, I, I feel, like a lot of the slashers. Um, of course it did. And so, yeah, it's just, it's still great. It's one of those movies where it's aged well. Like, I can, I still get freaked out by it. I still have fun with it. Um, my, his, <laughs> he's just such an iconic character. And I love, I love the fact that <laughs> his mask is a William Shatner mask. I think that's awesome. <laughs> but it's still one of the scariest masks out there. It's so creepy to look at. Um, yeah, yeah. And it just, yeah, again, great kills, great story, and it has sp spanned <laughs> to now. I mean, it, they're still making them, which is so cool. And I love that it's a the Halloween franchise is now a choose-your-own-adventure story, which is so <laughs> cool. You can pick many different, you know, realities you want to visit within this, this series. So, yeah. Um, but yeah, I think, like I said, it's just, it's so iconic, it's an original, and it still doesn't get old. It's so great. So yeah, my number four is 78's Halloween. Yeah, I saw a graphic the other day that actually put the Choose Your Own Adventure of the Halloween movies into really good detail. Oh, cool. Uh, like, which movies are sequels of the others, and what have you, which ones are in which timeline. Nice. I loved it. It was a great graphic. Nothing's going on except kids playing pranks, trick-or-treating, parking, getting high. I have the feeling that you're way off on this. You have the wrong feeling. Uh, I'm going to jump ahead because my number three is also 1978 Halloween. <laughs> <laughs> Look at that. <laughs> so not to jump into no, our top please. three without fanfare, but I think, I think it's, a, it's a good segue because, yeah, uh, my number three is Halloween. And... Nice. Uh, Again, little Scotty. <laughs> I'll never forget little Scotty before he got into horror movies. Mm -hmm. Laying in his bedroom while his, his dad watched Halloween in the other room. And he could hear that iconic <laughs> movie theme. Oh, and it so scared good. the crap out of him so bad. That poor kid. 
then then I've mentioned it in another podcast, but yeah, when when I was at my grandmother's house one night and somebody uh, one movie ended and then Halloween started to begin, I Ooh. just screamed bloody murder. <laughs> I was like, no, no, <laughs> turn it, turn the channel. <laughs> yeah, I did. I was so scared of that movie. Oh my gosh! But now, yeah, it's one of my favorites. I, you're right. It it started the whole. It's what put slasher movies like truly on the map. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, it's what a great movie. Yeah, so good. And you've seen my pictures. I actually went out to Pasadena recently and yeah. asked my friends if we could drive around and look at some of the houses. So I drove by the Myers house, took a picture, drove by Laurie Strode's house, so cool. took a picture. Um. The only house I didn't get to see is the house she was babysitting at that oh, you know yeah. that you see from across the street a lot with Michael walking around the side of the house. Mhm. And that's another thing about that movie. It's not just the scenes at night that are terrifying. Right. Yes. Man, when she looks out the window and he's just standing there so watching good. her, so creepy. Oh. To this day, so creepy. I love that movie. Oh, so good. One of my favorites, too, in that is when the sheriff and Loomis are talking. I, I won't spoil anything, but you just, all I'll say is you see a car drive right behind them. Oh, yeah. It's so good. Yeah, I love it. So good. Love it. Ah, great number three, man. <laughs> I mean, I think you can talk about that scene. But yeah, the car drives behind him and it's Michael yep. driving it. Yep. So no, good. So good. <laughs> so cool. Uh, I spent eight years trying to reach him. And then another seven trying to keep him locked up because I realized that what was living behind that boy's eyes was purely and simply evil. Andrew, what's your number three? Oh, man. All right. Now we're in the top threes. Jeez Louise. All right. Yeah, number here. three is, again, uh, has some comedy elements to it, man. Um, Uh-oh. No, but it's, it's, it's still considered a horror and has some of... It has possibly my favorite deaths of any horror movie mm. ever. I wonder if I'm thinking of it. I Go think, for it. And that is 2011's Cabin in the Woods. Oh! <laughs> was that what you were I thinking? I wasn't thinking of it. Oh, no. okay. <laughs> I thought yeah. you were going to say something else, but oh, yeah, Cabin in the Woods was in my top 20. Oh, nice. Okay. Yeah, I just... This was, and I mentioned this once, there's, like I said, without spoiling it, the elevator scene... I sat there in the theater and my mouth was ajar with the biggest grin on my face. I didn't know what I was watching in that moment, but I was so happy to be watching it. It was, uh, it was again, it was kind of like Fear Street, just such an homage to horror movies. Yeah. And just, like I said, had some of the best kills, a fantastic story, awesome actors, a fun ending. It just the whole movie was a ride, and it was a ride I'm with that, you, my friend. Yeah, I, I, that one I can watch any time and never be bored, and always find something new, especially in the elevators. Always. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I love that. I remember the trailer for that coming out, and it looked like just the most cliche, <laughs> bad like horror movie, mm -hmm. and. Of course, they couldn't give away the whole movie in the trailer, which, thank you for not. Yeah. Uh, but I didn't want to see it because of that trailer. Oh, funny. And then the movie came out, and people were saying, go see this movie. Just go see it. Don't listen to anything about it. Go see this movie. It's so good. And I, that was a time that I trusted people, and I went to see it. Yes. And, Yeah. It even starts off, uh, uh, as it started off, I'm like, uh, what is this movie? Like, uh, <laughs> I'm going to trust people. And then, bam! And it's yeah. like, wow, okay, now one of my favorite <laughs> horror movies of all time. So good. And I think, I can't remember if it was you or J our friend JD. Someone got a poster from it at Comic-Con. Might have been JD. I think it was JD. It wasn't me. Okay, but it was, I remember it was, because it kind of went into a nightmare mode where it just didn't come out for a while. But the poster, it was a, it was a cabin. And it said, like, old man tells you, don't go in the woods. You go in the woods. Or something like that. <laughs> and I was like, oh, and it was all these, there was like five different ones, and they all had different phrases like that. And it was, yeah, 
It was pretty awesome. And what a what a great ending. What a great ending. So good. <laughs> I love that ending. <laughs> Me too. It was, yeah. Just a, a blast of a movie. A fun, fun time. Yep. Agreed. Oh, man. I'm sorry. He had the conch in his hands. Know, you know, in a couple more minutes, who knows what might have happened. I, I am never going to see a merman. Scotty, we are at our top two, buddy. Yeah, and it's funny. Uh, we've, we're at our top two, but we're only halfway through this podcast. <laughs> <laughs> just kidding oh, huh. just <laughs> <laughs> we have another hour to go yeah <laughs> uh just kidding what's my number two yeah what is oh, your man. number two? Oh my gosh here we go so this is this is a fun one for me because there's so many classic horror movies mm-hmm. especially in the 80s and one thing that i've i realized a few years ago mm-hmm. is that my Number one favorite 80s horror movie. Ooh. It's not Nightmare on Elm Street. It's not any of the classics that came out in the 80s. What? Well, I mean, it is a classic in the 80s. What what am I talking about? Anyway, Mm -hmm. my number two is my favorite 1980s horror movie. It's Fright Night. (gasps) Yes. I absolutely love Fright Night. Mm Mm-hmm. And it, it is it is interesting. Like, I didn't realize until a few years ago how much I did love that movie. I knew I loved it, but then I started watching it, and I, I thought to myself, man, I honestly think this is my favorite horror movie of the 80s. Nice. It's got everything in it. It's got humor. It's got horror. It's got, in my opinion, maybe the best vampire in any movie with yeah. Jerry Dandridge by Chris Sarandon. Yep. It's it's I I can watch it any day and rewatch it. And and I'll even go so far you and I saw the remake together. Yeah, we did. And I will go so far as to say it's one of the few remakes that I didn't mind. And it's weird because yeah, you would think that a movie I hold in such high regard, I would hate a remake of. Right. But I I gave it an open mind when I saw it, and I actually enjoyed it. I haven't nice. seen it since, but I did enjoy when we saw it. But yeah, Fright Night. So many, so many moments in that movie are my favorite moments <laughs> in horror movies. Period. Nice. Uh, everything, everything having to do with Evil Ed. Yes. <laughs> uh, and especially, especially his big scene. Mm-hmm. Yep. Is just uh. And and Roddy McDowell, yeah, dude, holy yes. crap! Roddy McDowell as Peter Vincent, yeah. <laughs> and that's that's the thing. It's such, it's such a great story too. You have you have this this vampire who moves next door to our main character Charlie, mm-hmm. and I mean, how does Charlie go about? researching and wanting to take care of this vampire sure he mm. goes to his local late night horror movie host <laughs> so and tells good. him that there's a vampire living next to him and that's such a great story for a movie and like who knew and also directed by tom holland who directed the first child's play yes dude i love it i love it so yeah fright night so my good. number two movie Oh, that one's... I love that pick. I love that pick. Oh, and yeah, we did... I love the remake, too. We had a blast watching that. That was great. Yeah, I'm not sure if I loved it. Oh, okay. All right, I fair d- enough. I did enjoy it. I need to rewatch it, to be honest. I do, too. But I, I think I only saw that one time, but I just remember both of us leaving and just being like, wow. Yeah, that was really good. Yeah. Like, we were pleasantly surprised. Yeah, it did its own thing while still, like, kind of paying homage to the first one. Right. Yep. And and not disrespecting it. Right. Like like some movies, some remakes have done. Yeah. A Nightmare on Elm Street. <laughs> Actually, my number two is the remake of A Nightmare on... No. <laughs> <laughs> yes! <laughs> Sorry. Welcome to Fright Night. For real. 
points. Okay, what's your number two, Andrew? My number two. Okay, so this is gonna this is gonna shock you. I th- I think maybe. I don't know if it will. I Nothing don't know. Shocks me these days. All right. <laughs> my number two has has been my favorite horror movie of all time, but it is now my number two. And I have a beautiful Funko from this sitting right in front of me from <gasps> Mr. Scotty. And that is Trick or Treat. Yeah. Trick or Treat is one of my absolute favorite horror movies of all time. I love the character of Sam. I love that the movie's an anthology that all ties together in a very cool and unique way. I love the characters. I love the style. I love the colors. I mean, honestly, this movie, it was really very, very, very difficult for me to put this as number two um, instead of number one because this movie means a lot to me. And... Well, you know it. You've gotten me a fun You got me an action figure from Trick or Treat. I genuinely adore this movie. And this is, Sam is my favorite, um, not slasher, I guess, but my favorite uh, Halloween entity, I guess, yeah. if you will. Um, I love him. I love it dearly. I love that movie. I waited forever for that stinking thing to come out. I remember it went through like a, you know, uh, making it took forever like or uh, sending it out to the public took forever i remember seeing the trailer when i was in la and being like i can't wait for this and then it was like two years later i went to fye and i saw it sitting there and i about peed my pants i ran and grabbed it and i bought it (laughs) and i went home and i watched it and i loved it um that's fantastic yeah so trick-or-treat one of my favorites is number two well if you if you remember andrew yeah and this is another credit to our friendship. Yeah. Um, you are the reason I now love that movie. Aww. Because if you remember, you and I talked about it a little bit mm-hmm. um, back back then and when you lived here. Mm-hmm. And I was always like, yeah, it was okay. It was all right. <laughs> but then you loved it so much <laughs> that... And other people too. I mean, it's it wasn't just you, but mostly you. Aww. But other people like were putting it up so high that I was like, maybe I should give this movie another uh, another chance. And I think the other thing that had to do with it was Krampus. Krampus, yeah. <laughs> uh, Mike Doherty directed uh, after he directed a Halloween movie. He directed a Christmas movie. Yeah. And I absolutely loved Krampus. Me too. Yes. Dude. And in fact. It had a better first impression on me than Trick or Treat did. Wow. Okay. But it made me go back to Trick or Treat and truly appreciate what Trick or Treat did. Nice. And now it it's it's funny you mentioned it because just this week I think I told you that there was a movie that I didn't even think of when I did my top twenty a couple of years ago. Mm-hmm. And I just thought of it this week and thought, Oh my oh my wait, is this going to be in my top ten? I need to think about this movie. (laughs) And yes, Trick or Treat is a movie that I now try to watch every October. Mm -hmm. I think in the future, because our lists are ever-changing. This is our list right now. Next year, our top ten could be completely different. Absolutely true. Yep. Um, But I think think in the future, Trick or Treat might move into my top ten. It just... Barely wasn't there this year. Oh, cool. But no, that's because you put it in yours. Yeah. Oh. And it is one of my favorite movies. It's just got to, it's got to edge its way in there. there. These 10 movies I would take before Trick or Treat. Fair at enough. At this moment. Right. But no. I do, it's weird. It's weird knowing that a movie might move into your top 10 at some point, but it's just not there yet. Yep. No, I, you know, I'm there, man. It I don't always know if changes. that makes sense to anybody listening, but yeah. You're supposed to keep it lit. Why? Uh, ancient tradition? Henry, it's Halloween, not Halloween. So are, yeah. are, we, are, we, are we ready? Dude, we're at our number one. I'm actually, like, no joke when we were just doing this one. I got kind of sad. <laughs> I was Aww. like, oh, we're almost done. <laughs> like, this has been so fun. <laughs> yeah. Well, but, yeah. do you have any idea what my number one is? Do you have, a, do you have an inkling right now? Honestly... 
because I'll be honest, I totally did not even think of Trick or Treat. And of course, that's going to be like in your top three. Right. Yeah. So it's not a surprise to me, but I totally forgot about yeah. it. So it was it was surprising to me. And I think if you don't have an inkling what my number one is, I think it's going to be the same for you. And okay. it's 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 a crazy one because let me look at this list real quick. Ooh. Yeah. My number one yes. is also the most recent movie on this list. Whoa, okay. I have no idea what this would be. You're going you're gonna to kick yourself. Oh, geez. Okay. So my number one mm-hmm. comes with the same caveat that your Fear Street came with. That okay. while number one is your favorite Fear Street, you actually kind of consider the whole trilogy as one entity. True, yes. My number one, my favorite horror movie of mm-hmm. all time mm-hmm. right now is It. Oh, duh, The yes. most recent adaptation of It, uh, directed by Andy Muschietti. And it comes with the same caveat. Mm-hmm. I, I know a lot of people weren't really happy with It Chapter 2. Really? Yeah. I thought it was great. Me too. I loved it. Oh. Um, it... it it doesn't have quite the same tone as chapter one does, but that's the same thing with the book. Uh, the book follows uh, the the kids and them as adults. Mm-hmm. Uh, it follows them parallel to each other. And then you have, you can't really, it's hard to do that with a movie. So, yeah. uh, you know, it's very understandable that they show you the, the kids' side of the story in Chapter 1 and then the adult side in Chapter 2. Mm-hmm. Um, but Chapter 2, I felt really... It, it, it really made somebody who's a big fan of the book, it really gave a lot of nods that I really appreciated. Mm. Um, but if I had to pick one of the two, I would pick Chapter 1. Okay. I watched that movie so many times <laughs> during a year. Uh, it's that movie. So it is basically one of maybe my two favorite books that I've ever read. Nice. Uh, it's a big. It's a big book. It's over a thousand pages. I've read it three times wow. in my lifetime, <laughs> and I'll probably read it again. Yes. Uh, it it was just such a great book a Stephen King book when I read it because it's not necessarily about just Pennywise or about any specific villain. It's about what scares you. Mm -hmm. And each kid has their own thing that scares them, which I think is brilliant because that's how life is. That's how we are in real life. Different things scare different people. And in the book, it would take the form of what scared these kids the most. And a lot of times, yeah, that form was a psychotic clown named Pennywise. Yes. Um, So that character has become iconic in horror fiction, period. But I think think Bill Skarsgård just did such a great job as Pennywise. Yeah. He he portrayed this villain, this this movie monster that you want to see on the screen so much. And Andy Muschietti... I feel did perfect pacing of when to put him on screen. Mm-hmm. And it's it's just crazy. If you watch that movie, it's a two and a half hour movie. And it does not, it's relentless. It <laughs> it starts at the beginning and there's hardly any scene that's like a breather. Right. Scenes have breathers in them, but every scene, it just one major event after another. I watched this movie and I'm constantly thinking to myself, oh, I love this scene. And then it'll go to the next scene, and I'm like, oh, I love this scene. And just constant, 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 I love this scene, up until the end of the movie. And then and then he had a sequel that I actually really loved. Nice. Um, so, yeah, it's, it's crazy to me that I put this movie above every other movie, uh, horror movie at least, but... Two years ago, it was the same thing, and it was even crazier because it was it was even more recent two years ago. Yeah, but yeah, uh, mm. I fought long and hard about it, and I said to myself, 
if I if I could only take one horror movie with me to a desert island, I would take It Chapter One. Nice. But I would probably cheat and take both <laughs> Chapter One and Chapter Two so I could watch them together. <laughs> oh, that's and awesome. Also, huge, huge shout out to Benjamin Wallfish for composing such an amazing musical score to that movie. Nice, yeah. It's it's an it's one of the main reasons the movie is my number one because he brought back this orchestral cinematic score that yeah. you heard so many times in older movies and it had this innocence but yet this this scariness to it this darkness to it that's just so so brilliant and it's also one of my favorite horror movie scores of all time nice but yeah it chapter one. Oh, so good and I, I have two things to say about that movie too tell me well one i guess it goes <laughs> with part two what an amazing, amazing cast. Yes. That, I mean, for both, the, the first movie was great and the second movie, but the fact that they got people that looked like them and were great, oh my gosh. Like, when I, I remember reading who was going to be each character and just going like, yes, perfect, yes, perfect, holy right? moly. Yeah. One of the best casting I've seen. Especially, especially because the casting of both movies was so good. Yeah, yep. I I had never... Mm, except for one young actor, uh, the actor that played Stanley. I had never right. seen any of the other young actors who played the seven kids. Oh, nice. They were all so good and so perfect in their parts. Oh, mm -hmm. I'm sorry. That's not true at all. Of course, uh, of course, uh, Richie. Oh, right. Um, yeah. Stranger, from Stranger Things. Stranger Things. Yep. Uh, yeah. Um, but he had just made it big, and he was perfect. Everybody was perfect in their parts. And then, yeah, like you're saying, not only did they get really good actors to play the adults, but some of those were just perfect. Like if you look at some of those actors, especially especially the actor who played the older Ben. Oh, you know? yeah. Yeah, he was great. I mean, Ben is uh, the overweight kid mm -hmm. in the first movie. In the second movie, he's grown into this uh, handsome, uh, well-built adult. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, you can totally see in their face. <laughs> it's almost as if they filmed the same actor grown up. Right. It's it's incredible. It is. Oh. So yeah, I could I could go on forever about it. Yeah. Well, last thing. This is then I'll, I'll be done. yeah. No, um, let's let's go on forever about okay. it. Okay, <laughs> let's. That's it. Um, no, remember how I mentioned the changeling? How I got it from the um, Are You Afraid of the Dark series? Yeah, yeah. The kid that plays Ben, young Ben, was the horror fan in it, so he was the <gasps> one that talked about it. <laughs> nice. So there you go. There's there's a fun little trivia for you. That's ya. awesome. Yeah. Well, now I want to see Are You Afraid of the Dark just so I can see him in something else. Hey, it's on Netflix and Paramount Plus, so enjoy. Yeah. Nice. <laughs> Do you want a balloon to a Georgie? I'm not supposed to take stuff from strangers. Oh, well, I'm Pennywise the dancing clown. Pennywise? Yes, meet Georgie. Georgie, meet Pennywise. <laughs> now we aren't strangers, are we? Oh, I, okay, I'm excited, man. What's what's your number one? Well, we were bound to have at least one um, of the same movie, which you and I both had Halloween. Yeah, yeah. But I am now going to do a repeat, and, which is crazy that we only have two. Um, and also awesome. I love that we only have two. And this is going to be your number one. This is, this is really interesting to yeah, me. Yeah, so this movie, uh, and I will explain some stories. Um this movie, well, I'll just say, this movie was your number 10, and it is my number one, and that is 2013's The Conjuring. So funny, because when I was talking about The Conjuring, you were unnaturally quiet. I was. <laughs> <laughs> I know, I was like, I don't, because I thought in my head, like, I don't know what to say. Because I don't want to be like, oh, that'll show up later, because then you'd know my number one right up. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. No, so you like, did good, because uh, then you were quiet during a couple other movies, too, so I was like, oh. Okay. Good. Okay. That's what I was. Maybe he's oh. just letting me talk. No, I no. I, well, yeah, but I mean, 
I don't know. Wow, your number one is The Conjuring. My number one is The Conjuring. This movie is one Ooh. that I have watched a few times, and it's yeah. one that I haven't watched all the way through many times, and I will explain why in just a sec. But Please. this is a movie where like, whenever I need something to watch, if I'm sitting there cooking and I need something on the TV and I can't think of something, it, it is always The Conjuring. Always. I pop it on. I think this movie is spectacular. This is not only one of my favorite films in the horror genre. This is one of my favorite movies of all time. This goes in right. This is it's just a great movie. Um, and I think that's safe to say about both of our favorite movies, uh, <laughs> favorite horror films. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, yeah. It would definitely be one of your favorites, right? For sure. Oh yeah, definitely. Yeah. It. <laughs> um. But this movie, I think, I think the biggest thing that got me mm-hmm. are, and I mentioned this a little bit in, when we did our um, Devil Made Me Do It review, but it's Ed and Lorraine. I think, yeah, th- yeah. I think Vera Farmiga and Farmiga and um, Patrick Wilson have great chemistry. The characters are fantastic. Mm-hmm. I love the idea that they have this room of all these different things, you know, that they've collected. <laughs> Yes. Um, I love that the movie starts out with Annabelle, and that's not a spoiler. It's right at the beginning, I promise. Um, just a, a little blurb about Annabelle. That 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 and that that doll. There we go. <laughs> became its own thing. I mean, this movie is just a blast. The acting is great. The story is horrifying. It has some of the best visuals. This is the movie that made me genuinely appreciate James Wan. Um, truly as a director and just go wow he is amazing awesome awesome here's a couple things though why i haven't watched it all the way through the very first time i saw this it wasn't in theaters um i had moved back to actually it was 2013 so it was pretty soon actually after i moved back to or moved to washington from la um i was living with my parents and going to school again no i wasn't yet I i just had a job and was living with them they were gone for the weekend so I had their, you know, the house to myself, and I saw that this new movie, The Conjuring, had just come out to, you know, Showtime or one of those, and they had it. So I said, "All right, I have the place to myself. I love horror. I'm turning lights off. I'm watching this." I started up, and immediately I'm hooked. <laughs> About halfway through the movie, my parents at the time had a hot tub outside. Halfway through, wind <laughs> goes nuts outside. I mean, okay. it is like a storm is a coming. And their hot tub flap swings up and smacks down as loud as it can as I'm halfway through this movie. Light, you know, it's starting to get real dark outside. I about peed my pants. <laughs> <laughs> but here's the kicker, and here's where it gets weird, and then the other time we watch it gets weird. Yeah. Uh, there's a scene, and this isn't a spoiler, but there's a scene where some birds hit a window. Yeah, I remember. At that very moment, while I was watching, a bird hit our window. Get out of here. At that moment, I kid you not, I about lost it. But I sat there and I was like, well, I got to finish now. (laughs) I remember sitting there going like, this is really creepy. I thought you were about to say the opposite. Nope, but I was like, I'm so invested. That's how much I love the movie. I was so invested. I was like, "I, I can't not finish this. I need to see the end. Um, it was very difficult to sleep that night. The next time I watched the entire thing all the way through, and it's only happened if I sit there from beginning to end, (laughs) was with my wife. Uh, we were watching it. We were in bed watching it. And again, same thing happened where all of a sudden it's the scene where someone turns the light on and the bulb breaks. Right after that, we hear something in the hallway and we have our daughter in the room right next to us. And we're like, it's probably her, but... We're freaking out, and I'm like, all right, I'm getting the bat. You never know. She was sleeping, right? She was, yeah, but we still heard this. So, I mean, but we were like, it's probably here. We were trying to do that. It's probably nothing, but I'll check it, even though it was like, oh, my gosh, I'm scared. Um, I turn on the light to the hallway. It shatters. No. Get out of here. I'm not joking. I am not kidding. You can ask my wife this. And there are people that would say something about all these happenings. 
and yeah, <laughs> there there would be, and I'm sure there might be. Um, but we have not watched it all the way through since. <laughs> it's oh. if it, w- what we found is what I found. If we watch part of it and then want something else, nothing happens. I am very tempted to watch it all the way through again. We're in a new place to. now, and I want to see if anything happens. You have to. I think we will. And so, well, actually, I know we will. So here's the thing. Uh, my wife said tonight, she said, let's watch a horror movie. I said, man, I love you. Um, but she said, let's watch. You know what we should do is we should do all the Conjuring Universe movies in the order. Chronological? Chronological order. Yeah. I said, that's a great idea. So we are going to be starting all those yeah. tonight. <laughs> yeah, I love you. I, I love so you. So much. Yeah. <laughs> So I will let you know if anything happens or if, you know, our podcast just has to end because something happens. Yeah. Uh, yeah. No why. But yeah. Like so the, for the various first two times was just a bird hitting a window and a light bulb breaking. Right. <laughs> it's what else get... is in that movie that could happen in real life? Oh, I know. No. I'm, I don't have a dog, thank goodness. So nothing bad can happen to any animal. Yeah. Um, I know. I've thought that too. Uh, yeah, I think we'll see. Um, Maybe one of your Funkos will come alive. <laughs> Dude, that would actually be cool. I'm all right with that. Well, it doesn't really come alive, though. You're right. Let's, let's, let's it, be honest. It's a right. demon. It's yeah, maybe I wouldn't be. Animal. I wouldn't be great with that. But, <laughs> <laughs> but so you're gonna watch the Nun tonight? Uh, we talked about that. So the Nun was my very least favorite. Um, you have to watch it again. All right, we'll watch it again. I know. Yeah. I was like, do we need to watch that one? We'll watch just just go in knowing what to expect. That's true. You're right. You're right. We should do the whole. We should just do them all, I think. You're That's right. your least favorite. I remember. Mm-hmm. Annabelle Comes Home is my least favorite. Right. Yeah. But I would rewatch Annabelle Comes Home if I was doing a rewatch. You're right. You're right. If we're going to do it, we should do the whole thing. You have to do everything. All right. We'll do it. But just, just think of it as, a, as Raiders of the Lost Ark Part 6. <laughs> the Nun. There you go. <laughs> But yeah, so that's my number one for lots of reasons. But there you go. That that's is my, fantastic. My favorite. I love it. Mm. We started with the conjuring and ended with the conjuring. Dude, how good is that? I'm really glad you went. You went first. What a bookend. That's that's fantastic. Right. <laughs> that is awesome. I didn't even think that's so good. <laughs> oh man. Aww. Christine, are you all right? Do you see it? See what? Ah, <laughs> and that is our top ten. Our top ten. What a what an episode. This was awesome. That was fantastic. And I love that man, I thought I honestly thought that we were gonna have more than two overlaps. I did but too. we only had two overlaps. Yeah. That's great. So good. So when I put dolls in yours. <laughs> dolls in mine. <laughs> you had paranormal activity. I think those were our like are two unique ones, you know, kind of the, I like it though. I love it. I, you know, I kind of feel like Fright Night is my most unique, although I oh, still, right I don't think okay. any of mine are too surprising. I think, I think Dolls is a very surprising entry <laughs> in a top 10. <laughs> it's true. That's true. And I don't, like I said, I mean, I just, I fell in love with it in LA and I still love it now. It's just such a unique, weird movie. I love yeah. it. Yeah. Ah, oh, so good. Yeah. Um, but Andrew, it's time to wrap up our podcast. Yep. Bye. Uh, so last week, last week we did not choose a new movie because we were doing this top ten. Yes, you are right. But it's so cool that we have nice little things planned throughout all of October, all of these episodes in October, and our next episode is no. Uh, again, I just don't know the word I'm looking for. <laughs> no exception. <laughs> Thank right. You. There you go. Yeah. Woo. Uh, yeah, our next episode is no exception. Uh, we're going to be doing something very not, I don't know. It's not very, but it's a, it's a little ambitious for us. And yes, it's, for but sure. It's, it's going to be very timely. This is, uh, once again, you do know the movie I'm going to pick. I do. Yep. Because we, we kind of had to talk about this ahead of time. Yep. But my next movie is Hmm? Halloween Kills. Yes. Which is not even out right now as we say this. As as this episode airs, it's not out. So that means that this 
next weekend, we have to both watch the movie and then record our podcast so that next Tuesday, uh, just the Tuesday after the weekend it opens, we will get to talk about Halloween Kills. Yes. Which I think is so much fun. Me too. What an, it's, yeah. The only other one that was relatively new, I think, was Malignant, but this one is, I mean, brand spanking Yeah, Malignant new. was like, <laughs> I think I think our episode, our Malignant episode aired like two or three weeks after the movie came out. Yep. This will be but, days. Yeah. <laughs> This will be days. Uh, of course, if you're listening to this right now and it's 2024, <laughs> you know, the movie came out three years ago. You have no yeah. excuse. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> also, welcome to the future. Yes. Oh, wow. What uh, a cool year. <laughs> <laughs> right? Uh, so how are things in 2024? Yeah, right. There, people? <laughs> <laughs> Probably it's when uh, Skynet took over. So we'll see. The Terminator. Yeah. The Terminator. <laughs> yes. Keep doing it. Keep doing the sound. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> the Terminator. Do, 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 do. The Terminator. Do, 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 do. The Terminator. Do, 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 do. <laughs> I think we just wrote the theme for the next Terminator movie. Uh, yeah, we did. All right. Well, that's uh, our podcast, guys. That's it, everybody. <laughs> yeah. Sorry. But yeah, next week, uh, next week, listen in. We, I mean, first of all, this was a longer podcast than normal, so we yeah. hope you really enjoyed listening to our top ten. Uh, I'm sure. I'm sure there's some crazy omissions. Oh yeah, yeah, um, yeah. That some of you, some of you thought, but just remember that it was difficult for us to omit certain movies. Mm-hmm. It was. Um, but. We we both had our reasons, and this is just our personal favorite top ten movies. Yeah. Um, uh, but yeah, thank you, for, thank you for listening, everybody. Yes, thank you. And this we. Is, uh, I was go just ahead. gonna. Say, I was gonna mention our our stuff. You know, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, our beautiful yeah. uh, playlist on Spotify. But one thing that we, you know, I would like to see too, if anyone wants to post on our Facebook or anything, their top ten, I'd be a blast. Oh, I'd love to read yeah. that. So please, please. Yeah. Um, yeah, if you are on our Facebook page, please like. I, I I'm pretty sure everybody can post on there. So, mm-hmm. post your top tens. Let us know uh, at least your top threes if you have them. Yeah, please. That's that's always fun to see. Yeah, always, always. always. Not just sometimes. Always, always Coca Cola. <laughs> Speaking of today's <laughs> sponsor, no, I'm kidding. Oh, <laughs> it's a terrible sponsor. <laughs> Uh, right. But yeah, this is this was oh, this is so much fun. This was I, this was again, a blast. I, as usual, I don't want to say goodbye. I know it's hard, but but we have to. Yeah. Uh, but, next week, Halloween Kills. I can't wait to watch it. Ah, oh, me too. And for anyone that's wondering as well, you can watch it uh, in theaters, or uh, Peacock is going to have yes. it on their streaming service. So if you're if you don't want to go out, I know COVID is yeah. still there. Uh, if you'd like to stay home, be safe. Definitely check out Peacock. Definitely, and I think I think it's also safe to say, um, uh, from what I hear, Halloween Kills picks up pretty much right after uh, the the last Halloween. Mm-hmm. Did you just say Jaws eighteen? No, I said sorry, the two thousand eighteen <laughs> one. <laughs> Halloween Kills picks up directly after Jaws three. Yeah, <laughs> the best one. Um, no, it picks up right after the 2018 Halloween. So I think it's safe to say that Andrew and I might spoil the 2018 Halloween as well. I so think so, yeah. I'd say if you haven't, I mean, obviously, I'd also say if you haven't seen that one, it's probably imperative to watch that before Halloween kills. We might even, I don't know. I mean, we might even talk the original since that it's directly connect. You know what I mean? Uh, we'll see. We'll see. A little bit, yeah. A little yeah. bit, but yeah, just heads up. So yeah, we're probably, yeah, there you go. Heads up, we're going to talk about Halloween 1978, Halloween 2018, and of course, Halloween Kills. Yes. So I'm looking forward to it. Me too, man. It's going to be awesome. Dolls. Dolls. <laughs> <laughs> uh. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.
Welcome to Fright Night. For real. <laughs> 